Shalom, my friends. This is Impact to Impact Ministry. We have been given a mandate of God. God would have asked us to join with Him in sharing the message of hope. You see, the hope that God has given to us is in Christ Jesus. He offers peace eternally. And we, here at Impact to Impact Ministries, are helping other people to escape. We trust God that as you will join in our broadcast, that you will be blessed week after week, or whether it is that you meet us on the mission fields or simply on the streets, preaching this word of God. As we continue to declare hope reborn, Jesus Christ, indeed, hope to all nations. Welcome you to a broadcast, Impact to Impact. Trust that you will be blessed in Jesus' name. We're giving all sinners a brand new start. Impact to impart. We're sending the message. Praise the Lord. Indeed, we're so happy to be in your company again. And I want to just ask you to get your Bibles and uh, call a friend, tell your neighbor, listen, Bishop Holder is on Impact Impact Ministries. Make sure and share the link, share this Facebook um, feed, share YouTube feed, share whatever it is that you gather here on TIN 137 because we're just excited about the word. I have a, a message for you today as we have continued the team. Did you get that scene? The scenes in the Bible that I believe really um, stood out in my mind as God have been laying upon my spirit to be able to share scenes from the scriptures, Old Testament, and you, we're going to be going into a little bit more than you just now because we're going to be dealing with a little bit of prophetic things and end time issues when we get to the new. But I want to go through some scenes that we have seen and I want today to share with you a very important scene. My, the scene that I'm going to go through today is entitled, Get Those People Out. <laughs> get those people out and why we're talking about this we're talking from the book of exodus exodus and uh, we share with you concerning the story of the children of israel where the egyptians are saying get these people out of here get them out of here why because tables have turned and so today we're going to share about it what have happened in genesis chapter um, the end of Genesis, Genesis chapter 47, 48, 49 to 50. The children of Israel would have come struck in a wonderful deal. The God would have sent ahead of them Joseph. Why? Right? Joseph was sent ahead of them. Joseph was given a dream, a vision, a concerning how he was going to be just this magnificent ruler and his brothers his father his mother they want to be bowing down to him i mean he was not trying to put things on himself the young man had a dream right and we know what happened the scenes as his brother jealous they did what they had to do sold him as a slave and he ended up in egypt Finally, while he was there in Egypt, would have gone through all the, st the stages and he became the great ruler in Egypt. Whoever the Pharaoh was at that time would have called for help as to interpretation of a mysterious dream that he had. And the dream highlighted some, some debt and some carnage and the things that was looking very erroneous. It was a dream concerning coming famine and the famine was not just subjected to egypt but the famine was subjected to all of the land where people was inhabited at that time the children of israel were living just across in the canaanite zone canaan zone while the egyptians were there joseph was there in egypt god gave him the vision gave him the dream 
interpretation and told him the answer, the antidote. Listen to the word. God didn't just give him the interpretation and give him some revelation. God gave him the antidote. Right? I need to say that, especially in these days, because many people think that God is giving visions and just dreams and God is not giving the antidote. Even right now, this current world situation, God has also given the antidote. There's some people just don't want to talk. To adhere to what God is given and man wants to do their own thing and so even as man continue to do their own thing we see there in Exodus chapter 1 now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt every man and his household came with Jacob Reuben Simeon Levi Judah Eschar Zebulon um, Benjamin Dan Nathri Gad and Asher and all the souls came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls for Joseph was in Egypt already. Right? Joseph was already in Egypt and as we set the scene up, Joseph is there, the famine is on and God would have made that way. Joseph was there, Joseph was the man who was given revelation how to build these storage vats and all these things that he stored up the grain so that Egypt had food in the midst of the famine. And I thank God that God knows how to send somebody ahead to prepare them, to prepare a place of refuge for those who are indeed in need. So Egypt was in a place that was better than all the nations around. Canaan would have been troubled by the famine where Jacob and his, his inheritance were, his 70 souls that he had. And they were dire need for food. And the only way they could have gotten food, they would have traveled to Egypt, spy out the land to see how they could buy and they, they would have gone through the actions where Joseph was, was there and he identified them and he did what he had to do to be able to, you know, to show them that it is I. They found, finally found out and Joseph said, go and tell daddy to come and let him bring his whole house. And so that is how they entered into Egypt. The children of Israel was welcome into Egypt. They were ushered in with, with nice guards and protected. And J um, Joseph had asked the Pharaoh at that time, whoever the Pharaoh was, right? He said, where can I keep my family? And he said, okay, I want you to, you can have that section across the Goshen, right? So they can occupy them and just let them live. That's okay, Joseph. You have been a blessing to us. You have been such a tremendous blessing to us. And so your father and your brothers and your sister and your cousins and your aunts, man, they can come. They can come and stay with us, no problem. But the word of God says, Joseph died. Not only Joseph, but all his brethren and all that generation. And the children of Israel who was left there in Egypt Joseph died, and Levi, and Judah, and Dan, and Simeon, and Reuben, and Ezekiel, and Zebulon, and Benjamin, and Dan, and Nathri, and Gad, and Asher, they all die. So you don't have nobody to tell the story. There's no one to recite what had happened, no more eyewitnesses. And the Pharaoh who was there in that time, he also passed away because, let me remind you, we have an expiry date. Every single one of us, every one of us on planet Earth, we have an expiry date. It's appointed unto us once to die and then comes judgment. So they were all passed away. And now a new Pharaoh is in charge. But what was happening, it was quite interesting, is that the children of Israel, they began to prosper. And they began to multiply. They began to be fruitful. Remember, God would have said to Abraham, I'm going to make you into a great nation. The kind of a nation you're going to be, the number is too numerous to be counted. I'm going to make your descendants great. It's going to be like, they're going to be like the stars. They're going to be like the sun and the ocean, which no man could number. So the Jews began to multiply. And as they began to multiply in number, they began to multiply in strength. And so, the word of God has recorded here that the Egyptians, they said, right, there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph, 
And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when they fall out any war, they join also with our enemies and fight against us. So get them up out of the land. So his suggestion was we need to control this. We need to take some, some, some decisive decision now. We need to be able to set some boundaries, some parameters. So whereas the children of Israel were welcome into Egypt and it was a fine welcome, they were all excited. It was the place of refuge for the season of lack. It was a place of refuge for a season where they needed, they got a place of refuge. But now because of their multiplication, now because of their blessings, now because of the reality, is no longer 70 of them, it is no longer 140, it is no longer 280, it is no longer these numbers, now it is a numerous number of them. And the, and, and the, the, the favor is watching, he's saying, the favor is watching, he's saying that these people, they are becoming too much for us. Too much. So let's, let's do something about it. So he decided that he was going to ask the midwives. The midwives was given names, two specific names there. And they were told when the children of Israel, the daughters are making a child. If it is a man child, kill the child. Now I want you to hear this. I'm going to talk about this thing. Get these people out. And I know I'm not going to finish today, so you need to stay with me. The midwives were charged with a responsibility. You need to read it for yourself. Now, today we're in, a, we're in a state in our world where apparently our doctors and our nurses are charged with a responsibility. And strange, it's very strange that, that in our very day, in our time, the activity of our day, doctors are being asked to do something that is not in keeping with their good practice. They have been asked to do something, you know, you know, just a couple of years ago, maybe even months ago, you know, you get to talk to your doctor and your doctor give you advice and based on you and your doctor having a conversation, you make a decision. But somehow the world is quickly changing. Somehow there's some activity happening where our leaders in the world apparently is giving some instructions to our doctors just as the word of God have recorded that the midwives were given some instructions. Kill the boys. Keep the girls. <laughs> Isn't it quite interesting that this is recorded in the Bible? But the word of God said that the midwives fearing God, they said we can't do that. We can't do that. We can't do that. We cannot do this. We cannot do this. We have sworn our oath to life. We have sworn our oath to, to save life, to keep life. I mean, we... we I mean, we have been trained to bring forth life into the world, not to take it. This is quite interesting. It's recorded. The midwives, they were named, the two of them, named specifically. They said, we can't do this. So instead of doing what the king ordered, they were allowing the boys to live. And the king observed, he said, well, how come the children of Israel still multiplying so much? Call the midwives. The midwives reported he said well king we try no best in her but them children of israel them women they're lively <laughs> they are lively before we could even get there they make the baby already and we ain't even said no nothing about it by the time we get there we ain't seen nothing we we don't know the word of god says that god blessed the midwives gave them houses so those of you who today listening this broadcast if it is their doctor you have been sworn to save life. Don't let nobody deceive you into trying to kill people. Do what you're supposed to do. Don't be going and take life. Don't be going and participating in these activities of snatching lives away for gain. No, fear God, doctors and midwives. This is the word of God I'm sharing with you. Now I'm going to get to get those people out because it is getting interested. 
as this activity of multiplication continued, the children of Israel will not stop growing. And so the Pharaoh issued a new command. He said, listen, every single male child in Egypt, every time a child is born, just kill them, just slay them. Send the police, send the military, just go and kill the boys. Until Moses was born, his parents saw that he was a proper child. He was a Levi. To Levi parents, father and mother was Levi. And he was born. They saw he was a proper child and they spared his life. The scene transcended to Moses floating down the river into the bushel. And uh, Pharaoh's daughter happens to come to the river to take a bath. Sees a baby in a corner. Asks her servants to bring that baby to her. <laughs> is this coincident or what? I think that this is no coincidence. This is God's divine appointment. As soon as the maids brought the baby over, she opened up the basket and Moses started to cry. Oh my goodness. The baby starts crying. She said, this has to be an Egyptian baby. And it's a boy. It's a boy. I mean, but my, my, my father thought that we should kill them. But oh gosh, look at this baby. Look at this baby. Why I should kill this baby? And so she said, she was there and she was torn betwixt. Should I kill this baby? Should I alert the guard? And Moses' sister was there watching the scene to see what's going to happen to Moses. She ran out from the bushes and said, I, do you want me to get one of these, these Israelite mummies to take care of this baby? She said, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Call one. And she went and called her mother. <laughs> Moses' mummy took care of Moses on behalf of Pharaoh's daughter. And when he was aged, they took Moses into Pharaoh's house. A Jewish boy in Pharaoh's house and Pharaoh wanted all the males dead he didn't know he thought that his daughter had this child I mean I don't know where he think he get the child from he didn't see her pregnant she all of a sudden show up with a child <laughs> so it is that the accounts it said that it, it the thing shifted years rolled on 400 years was passed from the entry point to this point of Moses being born 400 years 300 plus Moses would have been bringing into this this whole closing era that God is now about to do something marvelous and I tell you the marvelous act is only now beginning because whereas the children of Israel they, they, their pressure have been intensified Pharaoh, the new Pharaoh, is putting pressure on them. They are beating them. They are taunting them. Everything that they're putting their hand on to labor, they were aggressively treating them unfairly. My God, God is seeing it. And he's hearing the people crying, Oh God, oh God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, when will thou rescue us? And they're crying out to God, Oh God, this is too much for us. And as this is happening, they are continuing to multiply and multiply and multiply until God said this is time I am ready for this now I'm ready to see the scenes change and so God said I'm gonna bring for you the deliverer Moses was put in place Moses saw a scene happening and he had his first installment of what he thought injustice was he saw an, an Egyptian beating us a, 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 a slave a Hebrew slave and he intervened and he he he, he slay that Egyptian and uh, the story was apparently quiet but not quiet because the Jews they saw and then the next time Joe Moses was reported going out he saw that there were two Jews two Hebrew brothers fighting one another and Moses intervened and said why are you all fighting each other stop this man and they said we you want to do us like we do the Egyptian who make you judge over us I'm paraphrasing right who made you judge over us Moses and Moses said this thing is well known so that means this thing must be known by Pharaoh 
and Moses left that place. He fled his life. He ran because by that time, this, indeed, the favor was gone in for him. He fled to the wilderness, and there he started a new life with the Medians. And then the word of God said that God would have heard the cry of Israel. And God said it's time for these people to come out. It is time for them to move into the promised land. It is time for them to be able to move from under the hard, harsh hand of the Egyptian to come to a place of freedom, of blessings, of prosperity. A place where he had promised Moses. A place where he had promised Abraham. A place where he had promised Isaac. A place where he had promised Joseph. That place that he had promised Jacob. He had said it and now he was saying it is time to bring them into this large place. Today I want you to know that when God has purpose to bless you in blessings, he will bless you. And when it comes to multiplying and multiplying, he will multiply you. So don't you dare be in despair. But let's go on because here it is now that the word of God becomes very interesting, intriguing. Moses showed up in chapter 5 of Exodus and Moses now, after God would given him the charge, we would have gotten all the details as to what, what Moses would have done and the hesitancy and all of that. But he says, and afterwards Moses and Aaron went in, told Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And uh, they said unto him, they said, the, the, the God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go. We pray thee, three days journey into the desert, sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. The king of Egypt said, I ain't letting all you go. I am not letting you all go. You all are my servants. You all are my slaves. Uh, you all are the ones that bring my water. You build my cities. I mean, I ain't not letting you all go. I mean, who is this God you are talking about? I'm not letting you go. And so the showdown began. The word of God said that as Moses and, and Aaron would have brought that report to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, no, I'm not letting you go. And then God said, okay. I'm going to have a demonstration here that is going to be recorded throughout the ages so that man will know that I am God. And so God said, I'm going to play Egypt with some plagues. I'm going to slay them with plagues. First thing Moses did in Exodus chapter 7 verse 17, 2 to 18, the word of God says that Moses, he decided with God's leading that he was going to have that demonstration begin hallelujah the demonstration who is god hallelujah the demonstration as to who is lord who is the one that is suffering over them all and so the word of god said that as the showdown began moses would have opened up his mouth and he would have made a declaration and he would have said pharaoh today we're going to show you that the Lord God of Israel, he alone is God. And so began the plagues. The first plague as recorded was the plague of blood. The word of God in Exodus chapter 7 and verse 17 to 18, it has recorded there, Thus saith the Lord, in this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in the my hand upon the waters which are in the river and they shall be turned to blood and the fish that is in it in the river shall die and the river shall stink and the Egyptian the Egyptian shall cl shall right, the Egyptian shall clothe to drink the waters of the river. And so the first plague began. Blood, the water, the river Nile, 
the main river of their substance, their, their support, that main river that they boast about, mighty big river. Now, I've never been to Egypt. Today, Egypt is not a fiction of our imagination. These things did happen. You can check the Egyptian report and you will see that these things really happened. This is not some fictional story sharing. It happened. The water turned to blood and the Egyptian felt the first installment of the wrath of God. The pharaohs of Egypt finally for the first time are seeing the, the power of God. Hey, and so Moses did it. Aaron took the rod and he hit the water. The water turned to blood. The fish in the river died and uh, the river stank it it was stinking the magicians of egypt also they did with the enchantment and pharaoh's heart was hardened neither did he hearken unto them as the lord had said now as i go on i'm going to wrap up for today because i want to take you through these 10 plagues the final ultimate plague is where you're going to find the story change where pharaoh is going to be say get these people out of here we don't want them anymore. We don't want them. They are plagued. They are cursed to us. So even as the, the, the blood was demonstrated, the magicians did their part. But I want to take you through the journey. And as I take you through the journey, we'll see where Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Some of the times by himself, some of the times by God. God hardened his heart. So I'm going to take you through that process even as we go through the 10 plagues. We're going to watch the plagues. We're going to see what was the effect of it. And we're going to see whether it was Pharaoh hardened his own heart or God hardened his heart to bring him to a particular place. But ultimately what we want to share, and I'm going to continue to share this again next week. We're going to finish up this, this account of the scene in the world where one king is saying, get these people out of here. We don't want them here no more. We don't want them here no more. Get them out of here. And so the end of the story would have been brought forth that the people of God was released. But I'm out of time today. I want to just thank you for joining the broadcast. I want to ask you to read up the accounts in Exodus. Take some time and read it up. And you can read from Exodus. Read the whole book. Enjoy the book. Have you never read the entire book of Exodus? You can read it up. But I'll be going all the way up to verse to chapter 12. But Exodus goes all the way. Gives more insights and more accounts uh, as to the children of Israel as they would have began the journey out of Egypt. And they would have been in the wilderness getting ready to be able to make some life among Mount Sinai because of their grumbling. So do take some time, read it up Exodus from chapter 1 all the way down to chapter 40 of Exodus. I'm going to be sharing with you next week. We're going to look at the plagues and we're going to get to the end of it where Pharaoh will say, get these people out of here. And as I close, I want to tell you that sometimes there are some people that you really do need out of your life, out of your space. Because some people are indeed not helpful some people are the ones that are holding you back holding you down keeping you from accomplishing your great exploits that god has in plan for you tell people you really need out of your life and as i share with this i'm going to parallel some truth to your reality that some people need you also need to see get those people out of here because their, their lives are, is not a blessing to you they are burdened. I want to thank you for joining us. Remember, we are continuing to share this message of hope. He offers peace eternally. We are here to help other people to escape. This is Bishop Holder of Impact to Impact Ministries. And we want to thank you for joining us on our Sunday morning streams, TIN 137 and 9 a.m. And on our normal broadcast, Impact to Impact Ministry YouTube, Impact to Impact Ministries Facebook. Look for us every Sunday morning on Mondays, or you can join us on the Zoom on Mondays. We have a very special Zoom Bible study. It's going excited. We're dealing with end times, the last things, and you can join us via Zoom. Join us on our, our thing. The, the numbers are on the screen for you to gain access to a Zoom meeting. Use the number, use the passcode impact, and join us there for a thing. And you could also join us for time of prayer on Tuesday, as we're doing it also currently on Zoom. God bless you. We go to, until next time. Bishop Ola saying we do love you. Shalom. Impact to impart. We're sending no message coming straight from the heart. Impact to impart. We're giving all sinners a brand new start. Impact to impart. 
We're sending a message. 